Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Peppo here. As Title Update 5 kicked in, it's once again time to update my longsword build. As in every Title Update, Capcom usually introduces new skills which are generally pretty powerful compared to what we currently have in the game. And that's why even in this case, we will make use of two new armor skills that come from Amatsu and Risen Shigaru. So let's briefly talk about them first. The first skill we are gonna look at is called Frenzy Bloodlust, and it comes exclusively from Reason Shogaru Magala's armor. This new ability will let you gain an extra war bug when you overcome the Frenzy virus. The time span of the additional war bug depends on the level as you see on the screen. However, the duration will be drastically reduced if you shift your weapon. Every armor piece that comes with Frenzy Bloodlust will also include Bloodlust, the skill that lets you auto-inflict the Frenzy virus in combat so that you can regularly contract the Frenzy and overcome it during the hunt. More specifically, Bloodlust changes the effect of the virus. While infected, you gain attack and evasion and stamina reduction according to the levels. Once you overcome the virus, the red portion of your health gets restored and you get an affinity boost, which is 20% at level 1 and 25% at level 2 and 3. The time that passes before you contract the Frenzy again depends on the level as well. At levels 1 and 2 is 60 seconds, while at level 3 is 90 seconds. This little explanation was necessary to let you understand exactly when the effects of Frenzy Bloodlust would activate since it directly depends on the Bloodlust skill. In other words, this means you can repeatedly gain an additional Warbug every time you overcome the Frenzy, and having an extra Warbug is a huge boost, especially for the Longsword which relies so much on the Silkbind attacks. As expected, the skill does stack with the third wire bug you can pick up in the maps, so you can get up to 4 wire bugs with this new skill. I don't know what you think about it, but to me it looks a bit overpowered. The second skill introduced with Title Update 5 is Heaven Sand, which comes from the Amatsu Armor. This new ability is simply broken, there is no other word to describe it. It activates after 30 seconds you are in combat with a large monster without taking any damage and stays active until you get knocked back or stray too far away from the monster. At level 1, it decreases the damage once and reduces stamina consumption, but most importantly, it lets you recover 50 points of sharpness with a simple switch skill swap. Like seriously? You won't need to sharpen anymore. And this is just at the first level. At level 2, the time to activate it gets halved, so you just need to stay in combat for 15 seconds without taking any damage. But at level 3, Oh man, if you reach this level, you have infinite stamina and infinite sharpness. Yes, you had it correctly. It completely nullifies sharpness consumption. It's the same effect as protective polish, but it can potentially last forever. We got it, guys. The most broken skill of the main series is in Sunbreak. On top of that, at level 3, you also gain the power to recover from ailments by switch skill swapping. Visually, the activation of the skill is relatively easy to notice, as the whirlwind effect around your character will increase, and at the same time you will also get notified with a message. As long as you have this effect around you, the skill will be active. The more skillful the player, the longer the skill will stay active. A huge addition in Title Update 5 is the new Curious Melding that lets you obtain insane talismans. Basically, every charm you had before becomes completely garbage compared to these new ones. I'm not going too much in depth with how the skill cap and slots work with this new melting type, but just that you know, you can now get charms with all the skills in the game except Frenzy Bloodlust and Heaven Sent, and with ridiculous slots besides that. You can get Dragonheart at level 4, Crosscraft at level 3, Mail of Hellfire at level 3, or even Build Up Boost at level 3, on a single charm, and with a triple level 2 slot on top of that. The power creep is nuts. If you want to know exactly what are the highest values of a skill or the max slot value on these new courier charms, I leave you the link in the description with the data mine from DDL Noor. Because of this new melting type, armor building became even more difficult now. Already with Courier's armor crafting, it was hard to come up with a general build that would work for everyone, as the final result is highly dependent on the skills you can obtain via Courier's crafting. Now the same applies to the talismans as well. And this is why I decided to make a build without the usage of a charm and augments on the armor so that it is accessible to everybody, no matter how lucky they got in the game. Considerations about the usage of a normal charm, curio charm and curio armor crafting will follow afterward, as always. Let's begin with the weapon choice this time. Amatsu Longsword starts with a massive 3500 attack with 10 hits in purple sharpness, 43 water and a level 3 rampage slot. 
but it has minus 25% affinity and no slots. Unlocking all the anomaly slots and augmenting it will make it reach 395 attack, 67 water and 30 points of power sharpness. Moreover, this weapon has the inner skill Silkbind Boost, the rampage skill we used to have on our old Tigrex longsword in the base game. Do you remember it? It increases the raw part of the damage of the Silkbind attacks by 10%. It includes Serene Pose, Handbreaker, Sakura and even the extra ticks you get from the Harvest Moon. This longsword is definitely pretty powerful, but my first choice for today's build is another longsword, the Desperate Roar Plus. It looks incredible, but Tigrex longsword is back, guys. With the last anomaly slot, you can increase the purple sharpness up to 40 hits, and counting in the skill Heaven Sent that lets you easily and fast recover sharpness, the return of the Tigrex longsword had to be expected. It can reach 410 attack, the highest value among the longswords. It doesn't have any slots and has a minus 15% affinity, but it has a level 2 rampage slot at least, so we can use the entire species jewels. The following build was made with this weapon in mind. Let's see the armor pieces, the decorations and the skills I recommend using in this case. For the helm, we use the Reason Kushala, which give us Wind Mantle and Warbug Whisper at level 3. For the chest, the Reason Teostra, so we get Powder Mantle, Critical Eye 3 and Weakness Exploit. I've already made two videos where I explain how Wind Mantle and Powder Mantle work exactly and why I recommend them, so check out those videos if you missed them. The big change comes now with the arms, coil and legs. For the first two, we will use the new armor pieces from Risen Shagaru, which gives Frenzy Bloodlust, Bloodlust and Attack Boost 3 for the arms, and Frenzy Bloodlust, Bloodlust and Weakness Exploit 2 for the coil. And look at those slots, this coil should be illegal. For the legs instead, we will use the Tempest Akama from Amatsu. Not only it has two slots at level 4, but it also comes with Critical Boost 2 and Heaven Sent. As for the decorations, you'll need a Sheath Jewel and a Sheath Jewel Plus, one Attack Plus and one Expert Plus, two Attack, two Expert, one Critical, and finally two Intrepid Heart Jewels. These are the skills you will get. Attack Boost 7, Critical Eye 7, Critical Boost 3, Weakness Exploit 3, Quick Sheet 3, Wirebug Whisperer 3, Bloodlust 2, Intrepid Heart 2, Frenzied Bloodlust 2, Wind Mantle 1, Powder Mantle 1, and Heaven Sent. We get to 12 skills, and without using any charm yet. Intrepid Heart in this build works perfectly with the new skill Heaven Sent. After you activated this skill, in fact, if you get hit but you activated Intrepid Heart, Knock Knock Back will be received, and thus Heaven Sent will remain active. On top of that, the damage reduction from Heaven Sent and Intrepid Heart stack, so you will get almost no damage from the first attack. It's the perfect skill combination. Bloodlust at level 2 gives you 25% affinity when you recover from the Frenzy, which together with Critical Eye 7 and Weakness Exploit 3 lets you reach 100% affinity on a weak spot with Tigrex Longsword. If you do have a charm, you can use one with Quick Sheet 3, so you can swap the Sheath Jewel's decorations with Mighty Jewel Plus for example, and a Chain Jewel to get bars at level 1. In this case, with a higher affinity, the Amatsu Longsword can also be used on water-weak monsters like Teostra, Scorned Magnamalo or even Flaming Espinas. It is a really good longsword, don't get me wrong, but I decided to make the build with Tigrex Longsword because it works on all kinds of monsters. While if you own a good Kuryo Charm, then you should definitely try to find all those skills that are exclusive to some armors like Frostcraft, Mail of Hellfire, Powder Mantle and Wind Mantle. If you then happen to find a build up boost charm, you can even use status longswords like Teostra or Seeding Bad's longsword for blast and Gold Raffian and Lucent longsword for poison. In this last case, don't forget to use Camellia's blessing at level 3 to get double the poison duration on the monster and 4A to get an attack and affinity boost. The same applies to Kuryo armor crafting. Try to always look for those skills you can't normally get via decorations and then depending on what you find, swap the decorations and adjust the level of the skills. As you guys already probably know, I'm no fan of this augmenting system in Sunbreak, and thus I decided not to use it for the time being. After all, I don't really need 4 pages of skills. I can enjoy and play the game just fine without spinning the wheel of fortune on Kuryo Armor Crafting, but everyone is free to play however he wants. The important thing is having fun at the end of the day, never forget that. And that's it for the video, I hope you enjoyed it. In that case, please consider subscribing to the channel, we are so close to 100k now! I wish you a good day and see you in the next video, bye!